Hi guys, this is the first episode of LOF Guides. Um, I want to start a series with this video where I go into the role of the support a bit, little bit more in depth. My IGN is Forrest Stump, uh, I'm a Diamond 3, so look, you support player, and I got up to Diamond by mostly playing support and a little bit of a jungle here and there. Um, this guide um, is to share 10 points and thoughts um, for a better understanding of the dual lane. Um, this video I will go into three, into the first three of them. And I hope um, you guys may learn a bit and if you like this video or have any thoughts on it and the making of it, uh, you can leave a comment um, and I will go on with this series. Uh, and we can surely start with the first point or the first chapter, which is... We all know this famous Ephraimer video where he's going on a complete rampage as Leona and is totally carrying the lane and is talking about lane presence and so on. You may get the general idea of what lane presence means. Um, that first I want to say there's no such thing as passive support. There are bad support players and there are good support players. What do I mean by that? Well, you can't just stay back in the bush and let your AD carry get poked for free. Do something about it. Poke back, walk up, make the enemy bot lane see, hey guys, don't poke my AD carry, I will do something about it and you may lose the trade. Or may the trade isn't worth for you. For example, in this footage you are seeing right now, I'm playing Sona and my AD carry is Vayne. Um, we're playing against Kogma and Nunu. And you see me walking up, I dictate where Kork can go, I dictate when Kork is able to farm, when he's able to get experience. He can't do anything about it, our poke is just too heavy. I dictate the lane, I put pressure, I put presence on the lane, I give my AD carry the feel of safety and com uh, comfort. That's something you have to get used to, you have to get used to, to carry your AD in early stages. The pro probably the first four levels are the most important thing for bot lane because when a bad trade happened, you probably have to back off and you are getting denied of so much XP and so much farming and you're already so m far behind. Do it. Just walk up, know your limits, put some damage, walk back. It's more about moving than about actually applying damage. You put pressure. Vision is always your number one or always should be your number one priority. For example, if you just went back, you have 500 gold to spend. Don't just buy a ruby crystal to rush the side stone. Get pots, get wards, get a mechie pendant, get something around that. Get boots, get wards, get pots, get armor, get wards, get pots, get wards, get wards, get wards. Vision wins games. I know you guys heard that a lot, but it's not just be uh, about bot lane vision and the bottom side vision of the map. It's more about ward your lane and that's probably the advanced ward technique, ward for your mid or even top lane. Do you have the time to walk top, ward the enemy red or blue buff? Do we have time to walk mid lane, ward around, around mid lane, ward the jungle entrance, ward your blue buff, get as many wards as possible and ward up. Get your team vision, they will work around it. Wards can deny ganks, wards can deny objectives. It's always more important to ward than getting your items first because you are the support. You have utility and useful spells without having the items. Um, the gold management is very, very important. Don't spend your cash without using your brain. Spend it wisely. Don't waste your gold for pots. You have to be sure about how many pots do I need for this lane matchup. Do I need more sustain? Get more health pots. Do I need more mana? Get mana pots. Do you think you can spam poke? get more mana pots. Do you think you may get engaged on and have to recover from this engage fast? Get more health pots. These are the questions you have to ask yourself. Never deny your team vision by not buying wards. It's the most important thing in terms of team play 
in the early game, late and of course and most important mid game because in mid game there are dragon fights, there are little skirmishes in your and the enemy jungle. You have to know where the enemies are coming from to CC them early and so on or um, just insta burst them. That's the thing you have to keep in mind. Vision is superior and your number one priority because your other uh, utility have a heavy support you can work without any items and it's kind of a snowbally effect if you don't ward up your ad may can't farm he won't get items he can't put damage down in um, upcoming team fights you lose team fights and eventually lose the game these are the kind of snowball um snowbally effects from not warding properly of course you always have to kind of Keep in mind where you want to go with your item build. Don't just buy 15 wards and think you will be okay. You need decent items for the mid game and um, sometimes for the early game. Um, it depends a bit on what kind of support you are and if you need to be more tanky or if you're just staying in the back line, giving shields or dropping heals. Um, you need to make a game plan for yourself. You need to make a cash plan, I would call it like that, for yourself. How much gold do I need for the mid game, for example? How much gold do I need for the early game? How much gold can I spend on wards? Don't just buy 15 wards. That's what I want to say, essentially. Think about how many you can buy and buy as much as you can. And by can, I mean get items too of course items are needed um, but I just wanted to say they are not as needed on supports as on carries or tanks or something like that you get the idea um, why is minion management so important in all three lanes uh, on the map well at first, and most important in the early stages of the game, minions do a lot of damage. Whether you have armor in your runes or you don't, they deal heavy damage to whether you're a tank or you carry or something um, else. And you have to always take into consideration that the minions may switch aggro onto you or your carry and they will take you down to like a third of your health and the enemy AD carry or the enemy support will finish you off easily. So you have to get a feeling how much you can take from the minions in the early game and you have to get a feeling how mini waves work. For example, if you pull um, the enemy AD carry or support into uh, a stacked wave under your uh, near your turret, you're gonna be safe because you can either walk back to turret or you can take the support down because your minions will deal more damage than um, the enemy minions who count less at this moment um, but there are certain moments where you can't engage under no circumstances like there's a huge wave in front of you at first as the first point your enemy uh, your AD carry wants this farm you deny it by engaging on the enemy bot lane and the second point is if you engage into this giant wave you will just die there's no escape out of that besides flash and you don't want to flash you don't want to burn flash for a failed engage so always tell your jungler um to wait if there's a giant wave you don't want to engage into it let your ad farm it and engage afterwards the enemy bot lane either backed up or they they stayed and that may be a certain death for them um, and you just um, denied your own death by not taking so much damage from minions. The other thing is you have to learn that you can deny experience and farm by pushing waves out uh, to the enemy turret when they back off. That's why it's so hard to tell when to push and when not to push because you never know maybe they are just doing golems and the fog of war and you don't know they come back you just pushed for nothing and stay um, under the turret vulnerable to gangs and so on so it's kind of a mind game you have to play 
and you have to learn how minions work. That's something you can't learn from guys, you have to experience yourself. You may make some mistakes, you may not because of this video, but that's something you have to experience yourself. So this was the first episode of LOF Guides. If you like this first part, um, you can give me a thumbs up or even subscribe. Um, I excuse myself for any language errors or spelling errors in advance because I'm not a native English speaker. So yeah, uh, see you later guys.